and we're live just like that. Welcome back to another show. Sorry for that slow start. So we're going to dive right into it and talk about fast food consumption, the physiology of fast food, how consuming fast food and the human clinical studies, how that shows that it affects the cardiovascular system and a new paper showing cardiovascular complications associated with the virus, a uh, vascular dysfunction and what's called a hypercoagulable state. So uh, welcome back. It's Mike Mutzel. Super grateful that you're here. Uh, here's, a, here's a screenshot of a tweet that I was tagged in yesterday and it totally blew my mind. So we have, uh, you know, we have a pandemic. We have a public health issue. We have a lot of people being very concerned about the virus. We have businesses being closed. We have schools being canceled. We have sports being canceled. We have people staying home. We have increase in suicides. We have a lot of issues. Yet we have a public health department in the state of Louisiana who is endorsing fast food. Fast food. And so what we're going to do today is talk about the physiology of fast food. A lot of people don't think there's really, you know, something wrong with eating McDonald's. People think, oh, it's no big deal. It's just McDonald's. It's just one meal. But we're going to talk about the physiology. We're going to talk about what happens when you have a McDonald's hamburger. What happens when you have liquid sugar? What happens to your cardiovascular system? More specifically with a focus on all the complications and the comorbidities that are associated with this virus that is causing all of our lives to be thrown up uh, it, it's a cluster, as many of you know. So look, in about five minutes, I was able to find just th two or three of some of the most, not the most recent, but some recent human clinical studies showing that fast food, specifically McDonald's, affects you know complications with our cardiovascular system and our metabolic system. Yet, I was really surprised to read this article right from Louisiana's public health department that is saying, hey all, come and get your tested for the coronavirus. Oh, and by the way, the first 500 participants will get a Happy Meal voucher. Uh, I, I, okay, there's a physician's name right here. This is this is in being endorsed. This isn't from volunteers. As, as far as I know, people that are involved in public health, you have to get a degree in this. Some people have a master's degree in public health. These aren't like volunteers that are doing this on the weekend. Like, you know, Johnny's mom goes down two hours a week. And these are paid people. This is their job is public health. They're endorsing McDonald's. Okay, guys, we have businesses being closed, schools being canceled, sports are canceled, travel's canceled. Entire industries are being obliterated to slow down the spread of the virus. Yet we have a public health department promoting the consumption of fast food. Are you out of your effing mind? This is unreal. So this, this really irritates me because we know that consuming fast food has issues. So let's dive into some of the issues and first talk about, uh, let's just talk about sugar at first. Okay, so this is, we all know that consuming liquid sugar from soda leads to a lot of health issues. We know from increasing uric acid, from driving glucose, from having insulin to rise. And we know that there's a lot of correlative data showing that Looking, and this was one study, you can look at the reference, it's really interesting, I heard about this from David Ludwig, or sorry, Robert Lustig, who, who uh, you know, in collaboration with research at UC Davis, show that, that grocery store receipts and fast food receipts, uh, those purchases are linked with increased prevalence of obesity. There's a, there's a really tight correlation, they did a lot of mathematical models here, so we know that liquid sugar, as you would get like a soda pop from McDonald's, for example, like in a part of a Happy Meal. <laughs> okay, it's linked with obesity. Uh, lest I remind you that obesity is one of the more, you know, one of the comorbidities, one of the complicating factors that if individuals are infected, if they're overweight or they're obese, there's a higher prevalence of those individuals who are, are hospitalized from the virus or are in the intensive care unit when they're infected with the virus. So, so. The common comorbidities that are linked with increased disease severity are in their order of prevalence and severity. Hypertension. Okay, I'm going to share with you some data very, very soon how consuming fast food creates issues that are linked with hypertension. Diabetes and prediabetes. We know that, that obviously consuming sugar, obviously consuming a happy meal is going to increase that comorbidity. Obesity. <laughs> we know that do I need to even go on? Consuming fast food is linked with obesity. We're going to talk about the physiology of that in a second. Uh, and then there's other issues like a recent surgery, um, you know, liver issues, things like that. So this is frustrating. This is frustrating for, for all of us who are doing, making healthy diet and lifestyle choices, yet we have public health officials endorsing the consumption of crappy food. And that's tacitly implying to people that it's okay, that diet doesn't really matter. 
The diet is, diet is over here. This is a virus. It, diet doesn't matter. Your diet really matters. We did a, a great live video yesterday talking about all the, the pathophysiologic abnormalities associated with metabolic dysfunction and how it affects the immune system. Okay. Nutrition and immunity are intimately connected. We know that people that are obese, people that are diabetic, have, have infections that don't heal, have increased sick days, um, reduced immunity and all that. And what's interesting is, is this is an interesting paper. My brother-in-law is an interventional cardiologist, so we share a lot of research back and forth together. He's working on patients, uh, some individuals that have been infected with the virus. And we know that there's a lot of cardiovascular complications in individuals who get infected with this virus. So obviously, as a prophylactic strategy, if we could improve cardiovascular health, then we can probably mitigate some of the damage that might be caused if people get infected and maybe reduce their risk of having severe disease uh, complications. And so really interesting uh, little screenshot that I want to share with you about the pathophysiology of, of, of the coronavirus. And you can, you, you can read a little bit more uh, you know, about this uh, if you would like. Uh, and you can kind of see here how you know, there's, there's a lot of issues and a lot of ways in which the virus affects directly the endothelium, which is that thin lining on the internal lining, kind of like the, the internal lining of a hose faucet or a faucet, if you will, the pipes, uh, your, the cells that line the lumen of your cardiovascular system, those are called the endothelial cells. And these small, these small little cells, they tend to get damaged by this virus. They also get damaged by consuming fast food. And I want to just make a, a, a little emphasis here and talk about uh, two things that you're going to see here on this. You're going to see ROS, that stands for reactive oxygen species. Um, reactive oxygen species can be likened to free radical stress. So free radical stressors, uh, oxidative stress is an issue, uh, the, the, obviously consuming fast food, but, but it's linked with, guess what? Uh, increased disease severity. So free radical stress, oxidative stress buildup is a complicating factor when it comes to the coronavirus. Now, this is what's really interesting, friends, is there is some data showing that glutathione depletion, uh, high levels of oxidative stress are linked with increased disease severity in these people, right? So if we know that, we know that, hey, look, if you get the virus, one of the challenges, you know, differentiating, you know, mild states, asymptomatic states versus severe states is free radical stressors, oxidative stress. Well, guess what? This paper that, I'm ha that you see right on the screen here was one of the first to show that if you consume fast food, it dramatically increases your levels of free, ra free radical and oxidative stress. So you're like, well, wait, hmm. One of the differentiating factors between mild or asymptomatic people and severe people is free radical stressors, oxidative stress, glutathione depletion. Well, the, how can public health officials be promoting fast food when we have data showing that fast food causes increased levels of free radical stress? So let me just read to you some of the quotes here. Um, so this was a fast food sandwich. I remember this study. I, I, I read it back in 2008 when I was working on my master's degree. So I wanted to pull it up here because it's still relevant in 2020. And what, uh, you know, in the post meal window, uh, after consuming a fast food sausage sandwich, what you see here is increased levels of postprandial, which means post meal, free radical stress. Again, going back to the pathophysiology of the virus, this is one of the issues that the virus, you know, one of the things that complicates uh, the pathophysiology of being infected with this virus is the free radical stress. And, and here we have data showing that consuming fast food does the same thing. So it's probably not smart to be consuming fast food. It's probably not smart to be going to McDonald's and getting a you know, chicken whatever sandwich, a Chick-fil-A, a fried food. So we know that fried food sandwiches, uh, French fries, things like that, which by the way, I was reading something on Twitter. I can't remember what the actual um, data was coming from, some sort of um, grocery store receipts. But what they found is that one of the most frequently ordered things on, on Uber Eats lately in all states, is French, fry, French fries and fried foods. Okay, so we know that fried foods and French fries also increase endothelial issues, cause cardiovascular complications, and free radical stressors. So we know that this is a challenge, so we know that uh, the content of that uh, is problematic. Okay, 
So look, uh, just a little sponsor timeout, friends. You know these videos are brought to you by our very own Myoscience Nutrition. I know a lot of you are staying at home. You probably don't have your usual outlets. I used to love to go to coffee shops. A lot of coffee shops are closed nowadays. So I wanted to create a supplement that you can make at home your own golden milk coffee with grass-fed collagen. So it has fenugreek, organic curcumin, uh, coriander, a lot of Ayurvedic-based herbs infused with organic coconut milk and uh, uh, grass-fed collagen. So this is called Golden Collagen, really unique product that can you can help make amazing desserts and coffee and teas right at home. So you can check that out on our website. That's myoscience.com, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. I'll put links below. That's myoscience.com. You can use the coupon code HIH at checkout. It's a really unique formula a lot of women like because if you, know, you can go to Starbucks and get some sort of golden milk type coffee, but it's going to cost you seven, eight, nine dollars and you know what? It doesn't have organic herbs or grass-fed collagen. So that's what's unique about that formula. All right, let's get into the pathophysiology of eating a happy meal and talk about how consuming a happy meal affects your cardiovascular system. It's not really a good thing. <laughs> so check this out. This was, I think, uh, 11 volunteers. And what they wanted to look at is how consuming a process, you know, a highly processed fast food meal, what that does to the cardiovascular system and to the metabolic physiology. And I want to have you kind of place some emphasis on, on some of these. I know this might be a little bit hard for some of you to see. So what I encourage you to do is maybe take a screenshot of this and you can look at this later. Uh, what I'm going to do later on this afternoon is update the link so you can actually check out the study. But I want you to look at on the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see flow-mediated vasodilation. Okay, so the FMD. This is a excuse me. This is a marker of overall, you know, uh, elasticity, if you will, of the cardiovascular system. And what you're going to see here is consuming a fast food meal dramatically decreases uh, flow-mediated dilation (FMD). Now, if you go down the list, let's go down to AMDA. You see that AMDA is altered as well. So this is a asymmetric dimethyl arginine. This is a, a proxy of cardiovascular uh, oxidative stress. And if you look to at 8-OH, I'm sorry, is 8-F2 isoprostanes, uh, you, you see a dramatic increase in F2 isoprostanes. So these are free radical stressors that are causing direct damage to the cardiovascular system. As we just talked about, we know that one of the complicating factors with getting infected with the virus is cardiovascular system damage. So again, endorsing fast food, probably not the best idea. Now, yesterday we talked all about blood sugar aberrations, blood sugar dysfunction, and its correlations with increased disease severity and mortality amongst individuals who are infected with the virus. And if you look here, I want you to pay attention to insulin. If you look at the insulin in both the, the beef-based burger and the vegetarian-based burger, what you're going to see here, insulin goes from 7 to 40, to 40. Are you kidding me? I mean, if you go to McDonald's and your insulin goes up, that that's a massive swing. That's a massive burden on your pancreas. That's a massive uh, impact on your cardiovascular system. And you talk about growth, you talk about simulating mTOR, you talk about causing complications associated with that, like cancer and neoplastic formation. That is a major, major issue. Even if you look at the vegan burger, insulin increased pretty dramatically as well. I think it went from like 13 to um, where or 26 to where was it here? Yeah, 13 to 34, which is pretty dramatic, friends. So, you know, suffice it to say, going to McDonald's, going to Wendy's, probably not a good idea. I, I, in fact, I have not. Call me a, a, a stick in the mud. Call me a boring person. I haven't been to a McDonald's or anything like since 2004. Okay, I just don't like. Look, when I travel, I just fast. I, I would rather just fast than eat this this crap. Now, I know people will say, well, you know, uh, Carl's Jr. now has grass-fed burgers or whatever. There are studies, if you actually look at what how much percentage of the burger is actually coming from meat, like actual beef, it's like 19%. The rest of it is filler, plant material. A lot of people say, oh, I'm carnivore, so I just go to Wendy's and get a, get a burger with no bun. It's not a carnivore burger, my friends. It's it's like less than 25% of it is actual meat. There's plant filler, there's cellulose, there's bamboo starch, there's maltodextrin, there's who knows what the hell is in that, plus what oils are the burgers cooked on. So my advice to you, don't eat fast food. If you think you need fast food or whatever, you're fast. That's what you can do. And wait, go to like a, a Savers or go to a, a grocery outlet, get some gr ground beef and make it at home. Um, you can do that. I mean, you'll save yourself some money. Uh, 
fast food is very addictive. It, it's like it's like hitting the cha-ching on, uh, on gambling. Uh, you, you know you probably shouldn't be going to eat there, but you do it anyway, and you're, you're just fueling that addiction. So it's crazy that we have public health officials actually endorsing this when we have human clinical studies showing that consuming fast food and fast food-related you know, uh, food offered there, we have ample data showing it's not healthy. So friends, I'm grateful that you were here. Thanks for tuning in. I didn't expect to do a live this morning, but I just, I, I wanted to share this with you. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being a part of this community. Um, thank you for uh, your likes, your subscriptions. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on a future video down the road. Have an awesome day. Tomorrow we got a really, really good show for you. I will get to your comments, your chats here very, very soon. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. Bye now.